Hi, welcome to this session about building event-driven architectures with EventBridge. I'm Swapnil Singh. I am a solutions architect with AWS Service Creation Team. Uh, the Service Creation Team is a part of the worldwide public sector org with AWS, and primarily we help EdTech and GovTech customers build modern applications. So let's dive right in into Amazon EventBridge and how it can help build event-driven architectures. So let's first talk about what problem the event, uh, what problem the event-driven architectures are trying to solve. This is a synchronous API, and as you must have, you might have used it in the past. With a synchronous API, the client makes a call to, let's say, an order service, and the order service makes consecutive call to an invoice service. And once the invoice service responds back with the data, the order service sends a response back to the client. And in this case, the data exchange happens between order service, invoice service synchronously back to the client. And this works in most cases. Of course, there will be error handling and all of that taken care of by the order service. But as the complex, as the architectures get complex, you continue to add more services that integrate with order service. The complexity of order service increases because now it has to handle the contract between order service and the rest of the three service. And it also has to manage the ordering of the, the calls that it's making. And it also has to take care of the error handling for each of the three services if they are failing. So this keeps adding the complexity to the synchronous API architecture. As you continue to add more services with order service and it increases the complexity, the, this architecture becomes more and more complex. So this is the problem that we are trying to solve with event-driven architectures. With EventBridge, you can create events out of order service that are sent to the corresponding services that are waiting for data from the order service. And there may be some targets that can on, that only care about certain type of events coming from order service, while the others care about all the events coming from order service. All of that can be taken care of using routing and filtering rules within EventBridge. So what is EventBridge? EventBridge is a serverless event bus service uh, provided by AWS. It removes that friction of writing point-to-point -point integrations. It is a fully managed service, so it handles everything from event ingestion and delivery to error handling, making it easy to build scalable and event-driven applications. And because EventBridge is serverless, there is no infrastructure that you have to manage. You only pay for events you consume. So let's take a look at the EventBridge architecture. Event bridge architecture, this is the event bridge architecture, and it has event sources on the left here. If you talk about event sources that are available to integrate, there are AWS services, many of the AWS services integrate with event bridge. As you see here, a number of services, uh, 115 AWS services already integrate with event bridge. Then there is also a concept of custom events. You can create your own events, your own business events that can be integrated with EventBridge and sent to EventBridge and fanned out to multiple targets. You can also integrate SaaS applications with EventBridge. So you can create an event bus and a partner event source so that any partner that wants to send events to your account can send it. It, is, it provides a logical connection between the partner system and the AWS account that you're working in. These are some of the partners uh, that integrate with EventBridge already. Event buses, as you may have worked with some of the CloudWatch events in the past, CloudWatch events are the events that AWS services create and they are routed to the default event bus. But in addition to that, you can also create your own custom event bus. What you can do is in order to send your business events, you can create custom event bus to which you send your custom events and you can divide them into various kinds of domains. So let's say you want to create a marketing event bus speci specific to the marketing content, or you can do that. 
And then there is the SaaS event bus, which uh, you can create to receive partner events. Once you have an event bus, you have the event source, you can associate rules with the event bus. Rules allow you to match against values in the metadata and payload of the events ingested. And you can determine which events should get routed to which destinations using those rules. Rules can also match schedules. So if you want to schedule an event to happen every five minutes or you want to it to happen at a certain time interval, it can also take care of that. So let's take, a, take a look at one of the event structure. As you see here, this is an event structure. Uh, this is what the event structure looks like when you go send an event to event bridge. The top part there is the metadata associated with it. And this version ID, account, region, time, this gets added by the event bridge service itself. It's not something that you have to send explicitly. You can send source. You can send detail type, resources, and detail. Uh, in your event when you are creating a custom event. Here is an example of event. So as you can see, we are creating a detail type of order created. That means we are trying to send an event that indicates that an order was created and the source is com.orders. If we want to listen to these events, we want to create a source of, we want to create a filter with the source com.orders. This example rule states that any events that are logging into that event bridge with source com.orders should be filtered and should be sent to the target associated with this rule. Similarly, if you want to listen to an event and send it to a particular target, target if its currency is AU or NZ, you can do that using this rule. You have, you, as you can notice, it has the detail section of the event as well as the currency. So it is maintaining the hierarchy of where the currency data element lands in that JSON structure. Another example, if you want to create a, a filter for detail type ticket resolved and you want to send it to a particular target, you can create this event rule for that. Now, these were some simple event rules. Uh, there are some more complex event rules that can be created. Business logic is, is never simple. So you can create uh, rules where you say they are equal to, the data is equal to multiple elements. For example, location is Sydney, day is Monday. You can do all of that filtering using event rules as well. You can also filter using comparisons, like it's not equal to something, or it's a numeric value, it's in a range of the numeric value, or whether a data element exists or not. So there are multiple complex rules that you can create using these. In addition to being the router of the events and allowing you to route events through event rules, EventBridge also allows to transform the events in while you're sending it forward. So you can send an event if it is completely matching the rule that you have created within the rule, or you can send just the part of the matched event. You can also use an input transformer and say that if the event is arriving in a certain format, edit it and change it slightly before sending forward. And you can also send a constant value forward. In, in some cases, that might be a good solution. EventBridge also allows you error handling. So EventBridge takes care of it for you. It retries the events for up to 24 hours or 185 times. And it, you can configure the maximum number of retries or the maximum age of events which you want to get retried. You can also associate a dead letter queue with the event, uh, with the event rule and the target. And you can say that once the event has failed to retry multiple times, it lands into the DLQ. And then you will add the message. It, the event bridge will add the message attributes, the error code, error message, rule ARN and target ARN for later uh, reconciling of the events. So this is the architecture summary of everything we have reviewed so far. We have event sources, event bridge, event bus in between, and then the targets. So the event will start at the 
source and it will be verified by all the rules. It will be evaluated by all the rules on the event bridge and it will be forwarded to any rules that actually validate against that event. And then it will be the event will be forwarded to the targets that are associated with the rule. Event bridge pipes reduce the amount of integration code you need to write and maintain when building event-driven applications. Event-driven event bridge pipes were created to solve a certain problem for development. If when you're integrating sources and targets and sending events across uh, these applications, there are certain nuances of each technology that you have to deal with when integrating code. There is error handling that you have to manage. There is ordering, there is target considerations, authentication retries, performance testing, deployment. So all these issues, all these considerations, I would say you have to handle when you are integrating two systems. And that incurs cost on the development cycle. There is decreased development velocity. It increases risk of bugs, increases complexity, and that's all a high total cost of ownership. And in order to resolve that, you can use event bridge pipes. Event bridge pipes allow you to write less integration code because it allows you filtering and enrichment of your uh, data while you're creating the event uh, bridge, bridge pipe without having to write code for it. You can save costs with filtering and built-in integrations. That way you don't have to write code and also create new compute services. You can source events in real time and reduce operational overhead. So how are pipes different from event buses? Event buses are many publishers to many consumers. You can send many events, so you can connect many event sources and send to many targets downstream, whereas pipes allow you a single publisher to single consumer integration. So let's take a look at some of the use cases of event bridge pipes. For example, if you had to solve this case without event bridge pipe, sending a message in SQS to step functions, you will have to write a Lambda function where you take the message, read the message from SQS and send to step functions. But instead of doing that, you can now integrate this source and target using event bridge pipes. So you can create a pipe that has the source as SQS and target as step functions, and that will take care of sending the event forward. The same way you can use splitting of Kinesis data stream using event uh, bridge pipes. You can split multiplex data streams into multiple domain streams without writing any code. Let's talk about some of the other features that EventBridge provides. One of the important features is global endpoints. Global endpoints provides managed replication between event buses across two different regions. And we use Route 53 to use uh, to health check the event bus endpoint. And once the primary event bus is not responding due to some reason, service unavailability or su such, the events are then routed to a secondary event bus, and that allows you multi-region high availability and disaster recovery. So let's take a look at how that works. This is an architecture where we have a primary region where we have one custom event bus and a secondary region with another custom event bus. And the data between these two event buses is replicated. So when pr producer sends the events, uh, to event bus, it actually sends it to the global endpoint. From the global endpoint, because the primary event bus is up and running, it sends it to the primary event bus, and then the data is cross region replicated to the secondary event bus. But in cases where the primary event bus is failing, so let's look at, take a look at that. The producer sends input events to the global endpoint, but the alarm has triggered from route 53, which is doing the health check on the primary event bus. And that alarm then fails over using route 53 endpoints, it fails over to the secondary event bus. And the global endpoint then switches to the secondary event bus from where the 
data can continue to be streamed and it can be archived for later cross-region replication to the custom event bus. Another feature that I just mentioned uh, Event Bridge provides is archive and replay. You can create an archive of events so that you can easily replay them at a later time. And you can, in addition to replaying all the events that you have archived, you can also filter events based on an event pattern. And then replay is, of course, when you're replaying events from archive, you can specify a time range, you can specify an event pattern and replay the events. Schema registry, that is another feature of EventBridge. A schema is defined as the structure of events that are sent to EventBridge. And schema registries are the containers for the, those schemas. Schema registry continues to collect and organize schemas so that your schemas are in logical groups. And it uses schema discovery to do that. So you receive the event on the event bus and then the schema discovery allows you to register those events in the schema registry. And out of those schemas, you can now create code binding. You can use IDs or consoles or API to create those code bindings and use them in your applications. Let's talk about some of the best practices when using event bus, event bridge. Uh, with observability, you can trace the events using AWS X-Ray. You can monitor them using CloudWatch metrics. For custom events, Put Events API contains the tracing header that you can use to trace the events. There are also metrics that are available on the, on the CloudWatch metrics. For example, failed invocations, dead letter invocations. These metrics will help you analyze the events that you're sending to the event bridge. Some of the other best practices when you are using event bridge, you should try to use a single rule per subscriber. Unless you're sure in, in future, there's no, not going to be a change in the subscriber or the logic behind the rule. Because once you have set the rule and subscribers, they are tied to each other. So you want to be careful. Try to use a single rule per subscriber. Avoid using the default event bus for custom application events. Try to create a different event bus, a custom event bus for your specific use case. Avoid routing at the producer as well, because EventBridge is taking care of the routing. Utilize CloudWatch logs for debugging and use dead letter queues so that if the events are failing, event bridge takes care of retry. But if they still continue to fail, the, the events land in the dead letter queue. Just a quick comparison between event bridge and SNS. Event bridge reacts to events from SaaS applications, which is a capability that SNS does not provide. Event bridge also integrates with multiple AWS services directly without having to write code, whereas SNS has capability to just integrate with a few of those services. Uh, that's the large number of target types that event bridge provides. And you can create rules that are applied across the entire body of payload using event bridge. Whereas with SNS, you can only filter along the message attributes. So that's all about event bridge and event bridge pipes. Uh, there, these are some of the useful resources that are available. The features and use cases and pricing, you can find them at the event bridge, uh, at the event bridge link. And you can also find some of the hands-on workshops for serverless here, as well as take a look at serverlessland.com where you can find multiple patterns using EventBridge. There are some snippets of code, there are some uh, architecture patterns. So you can take a look at serverlessland.com for some examples. And that's all from me today. Thank you so much for joining me.